USDA report uh, with mis mixed signs to the markets. Jerry Gideo is ready to analyze all of that and more right here on Connected the Farmer, your channel to keep you up to date with the latest trends in agriculture and livestock. So, Jerry, what's the big thing that you have seen in this report that uh, has generated mixed sentiments? Well, uh, the USDA's, uh, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, uh, U.S. winter wheat slash total wheat crop. Actually, most of it was a big jump in spring wheat production by 45 million. Also, there was an increase in some hard red, too. But overall, a big jump there in the, in the crop size. So that didn't help a market that was already struggling a little bit here. And then, of course, the bean uh, carryover stock uh, at the end of the year, instead of going down, uh, the trade was looking for $8 million. I was even looking for $20 million down uh, on stuff. I uh, came in with a higher number here of $18 million at $268 million. Now, I know that's higher, uh, but $18 million is really not a nasty number. If we're talking 50 or 75 million, something like that, then you can talk about, uh, particularly at this point in the game here, when we've already got a market on its defensive here going into harvest. Still be interesting as to how the uh, the uh, players look at things as we go into next week, once we get through these things a little more detailed. But uh, the uh, twist of it is, is that... Um, Oh, and the, the other thing about the corn, too, we, that was the other big factor in here. The the big number there, actually, we went down uh, about uh, uh, about 50 million from the trade estimate and 75 million from the uh, USDA's number back uh, uh, last earlier this month or the last time we had an S&D number up here for the end of the year. So uh, uh, to some extent, uh, our it looks like that uh, that number really got uh, pressed because the other two were on the defensive pretty much here because of the numbers. And I think the one, this is a big general uh, idea here is, is that uh, uh, the markets also were uh, disappointed by the indications out of Washington that there was going to not be any kind of uh, uh, budget resolution, which is going to ultimately mean less information and, uh, all that type of thing. I don't know that that's ultimately how the market's going to react next week, but today it was, oh, well, I won't want to be on the sidelines. So that's part of the reason we had a pretty vicious uh, setbacks here in corn and soybeans, uh, excuse me, uh, soybeans and wheat and a little bit in corn. Yes, and uh, do you think uh, the that the USDA report coincides with uh, what you're seeing in terms of international demand? Well, the international demand has been a really kind of an interesting world here, particularly on the, uh, we started out on wheat, and I think it's the wheat side of things here. We're at some pretty interesting long-term levels. And today, we actually slipped down uh, below some technical support there at 575, and that's added to our weakness here. Uh, basis, the lead month in U.S. soft red wheat in Chicago. But the reality of it is, is that... Uh, uh, we keep getting more and more uh, commentary here about uh, Argentina's uh, wheat crop uh, is just not getting any rain here as it comes out of its dormancy here going towards its harvest time. Same situation to some extent in Australia and that. And even there's some updates here the last couple of days from Europe that their wheat crop was a little smaller uh then uh, they pre it's not a huge number it's like one and a half million metric tons something like that uh corn was going to be a little bit lower actually the one thing it did go up with, of course was uh uh was some uh uh rapeseed over there but uh in general here uh the international situation on wheat uh still is pretty shaky here on our output one background information that uh, it's always hard to to know what the Chinese really are doing or not doing, uh, that type of thing. The background information that was popping up 
late yesterday and then today uh, was that China had been a buyer of uh, Ukrainian corn uh, and that, uh, and it, yeah, I guess that's a, a positive for the Ukrainians uh, uh, and that and, and their struggles out in front of us here. Uh, but the interesting thing is that uh, last time the Chinese had a whole bunch of uh, corn from Ukraine uh, on order, and they got stuck in the Black Sea uh, issues for eight to ten months, and it took them another six or eight months before they get it all out of there. So ultimately, uh, it the whole situation in Ukraine is uh, not the easiest because uh, they really have to market that out through the Black Sea and, and send a boat around to China. There's not any uh, potential way of uh, taking it and, and training it to uh, China uh, from that standpoint. So that's a kind of an interesting twist. Uh, the, how much that happened, how, how big a total it is, uh, it's interesting in the point of view that um, it's out there and the rumors are there about it. But at the same time, uh, how many tons is it in uh, uh, what's involved there is going to be a mystery because the the other thing that's going to happen in this thing is, is as we go forward here, USDA uh, uh, is probably going to give us some updates on F, uh, exports uh, and, and what the shipments are going out of New Orleans in the U.S. But at the same time, the prospects of uh, there in the past, at least, there's not been any uh, new exports uh, being announced either daily or um, or uh, on a weekly basis on Thursdays like we've had. So that's the last time this happened, I think it was in 2019. Uh, it, it's happened two or three times, but uh, one, one uh, situation was such that the Chinese took advantage of that period of time in there. That was actually towards the end of a, uh, our uh, big bout with the Chinese here about uh, that Trump had got into a fight with them. And uh, so the, the, we were in about to uh, settle some of that um, disagreement and the Chinese were buying things while our government was shut down and not reporting the sales uh, going on. So that is another twist of fate in here uh, that's going on in this thing going forward here at this point uh, from there. Uh, the in uh, the wheat side of things. Uh, from there, U.S. corn. Uh, interestingly enough, this uh, the this year's corn carryover stock is very similar uh, to last year's level. Uh, from there, one point three seven uh, billion bushels uh, on that number. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, from there. And so uh, the big thing in corn is, is what kind of uh, crops are we going to have going forward here? The uh, USDA did make a minor adjustment in last year's crop. Uh, they did take uh, 15 million off of the total production. They made some adjustments in harvested acres. Uh, didn't really change a lot on the yield. Uh, similar situation in beans. They took uh, uh, 7 million off of the crop size uh, for last year uh, on that one. Oh, so it's interesting that uh, at this time, there are many reports of how bad the crop is in Missouri and Kansas. Oh, yes. There's lots of reports to that extent. There's other places in Iowa that's the same situation. And at the same time, uh, you got some very good yields coming out of Illinois. I've had a mixed response out of some of the Indiana, considering the fact that that crop uh, didn't have some of the heat stress, some, maybe that Nebraska, Kansas, Missouri uh, had in the past. So it's going to be a real interesting. Unfortunately, that's the other part of this thing uh, that the uh, October 12th report here from the USDA. Uh, I'd have to say that if we're not really up and running here by uh, this time next week, next Friday for sure, maybe Thursday even, then the USDA is going to have to postpone their October 12th uh, report because they won't have enough time to get all the information in and all that kind of stuff. Because the real thing you realize is, is that uh, some of the, uh, uh, the rank and file uh, 
USD employees that are uh, are uh, putting together, uh, you know, this information, things like that. They're officially not supposed to be in the office. That doesn't mean that they are just like us all these days. We've got a lot of uh, remote things going on and all that stuff. But, you know, the information that they get from uh, the country and also from their labs and things like that, it's going to make it really tough for them to feel like that they can have an October 12th report, particularly if uh, if it drags on past the middle of next this coming week. And so that uh, one time in here, we actually didn't even have an October crop report. Uh, I think it came, uh, I think the, it was like the middle, like say it was the 10th or 12th, it was settled on the 15th or 18th. And by the time they, you know, why put something out? Because they're already started on the next cycle. So that'll be real interesting. It'd be very disappointing. And I think it will cloud our situation here about what our crop size are if that happens. But it's not impossible that that could happen. So we are headed to a slow week uh, thanks to the U.S. representatives. Uh, very possible, yes. The, uh, the House of Representatives uh, Republican Party has not figured out how to, to run a government there. They're all fighting with each other at this point. And so, uh, unfortunately, that is uh, can make things quite interesting here going forward. Uh, from there, the... Uh, <clears throat> The details here, uh, we're going to get some basic informations here uh, out, but we're not going to get enough really to make us good uh, or make us uh, feel good about, about what we're going to have here from the uh, USDA. And uh, that's an interesting one about it. Is we, I know we slammed it hard today because, oh, well, we don't know what's going to happen. And the today's information wasn't really all that exciting, but same thing time is that the, the same people that sold it, uh, they're not going to get any information to tell them it's a hell of a lot better than it was uh, earlier. And there's definitely, like you're pointing out, a lot of social media talking about uh, crop sizes in Kansas and Missouri and uh, parts of Iowa and even Minnesota. I've heard some issues in the South. Uh, and it's easily possible because this was dry in Minnesota too. They, the USDA's number for Minnesota and all these states are definitely not uh, outstanding. I guess we're not going to have a lot of changes in last year's crop, but at the same time, uh, there's still a lot of uncertainty here as to what the crop size will be for 2023. But at this point, uh, we might not know for a few more days, to maybe even longer than uh, uh, October 12th. All right. Thank you very much, Jerry. You bet. Have a good evening and uh, hope everything in the East Coast dries out for you.